Well, ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends, I have to say that I'm very glad and honored to be here with you today. And I am thankful to the German government for inviting me to be, to be here. As has been said, this is my first engagement out of my home in Abu Dhabi. In fact, this is my second day of work. And uh, I, it, it seems to me so natural that I am here, where Arena is uh, having its second house, second home, and where uh, we have uh, uh, Germany host our center for uh, innovation and technology. So it's really uh, familiar to be, to be here. And I wish to remember that uh, just 10 years ago, there was the conference to establish ARENA just here in Germany. So a very short period. And now in this short period, more than 180 countries are engaged in the work of ARENA. So most of the UN members are part of our work. So uh, it was excellent to hear the speech from, uh, from Fatih. Uh, all many things that are, has been said as part also my, of my, of my presentation. What I can say is that uh, all we are experimenting that the energy transition is in place. So we are experimenting. The market is uh, leading to the transformation. We can uh, uh, see as uh, 2018 as marked as the eight years where the seventh year where the new installed capacity coming from renewable instead of uh, traditional uh, traditional uh, sources. 63% of the new capacity added in 2018 are coming from renewables. And uh, uh, what we can say that this is cutting just for the market and political action. As Fatih has correctly say, the price of uh, the renewable is declining and this makes more convenient to uh, invest in renewable. We have an expanding use of electric vehicles, so, so we have all different signals, signs that make clear that energy transition is in place. What is the problem that we have to face? That is happening too slow. As uh, have you seen in the graph coming from, uh, from Fatih, we are very from, far from to have a sustainable path. We are really out of the, of the uh, uh, path that we have to follow to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. Energy demand has been growing, and the CO2 emissions start again to grow. And uh, I think that uh, there are two special parts of our planet. Africa has been mentioned, Southeast Asia, where the energy demand is growing at a pace that is double of China. So it makes clear that, uh, as it is now, the trend that the market has in some way set is not sufficient. So we have to do more. So we need the uh, work of the government. I want to show that uh, also in the country where, uh, where the political uh, uh, I have to say, the political address is not perfectly in line with, uh, with our aim. The renewables are, are always declining as term of price, and the market is going up. This is like that I have just said from the Solar Association in the United States. So also there, where we have now a presidency that is not, it's not so climate friendly, the market is responding in the right way. But I repeat, too slowly. So uh, what is the answer that uh, uh, we may find this report that I may very proud to present today, the roadmap of 2050, 
the last creature of the work of, uh, of Arena. Our answer is to invest in the electrification and on an electrification that is fitted by, by renewable. To stay in line with the Paris Agreement, the only instrument that we have, the only one, is renewable. Working on renewable, we can gain a reduction of 70, 75 percent in 2015. And we had, as has been correctly said by Fatih, also the energy efficiency, we get 90 percent of what we need. So we have to be clear, and this has to be also a clear message that we want to uh, send to the meetings like the DG20 and others, that renewable is the only answer we have if we want to be serious in this uh, exercise. Just to give you an idea, in 2016, as you say, respect of the energy generation, the part of coming from the electrification, electricity is very small. So we have to get, if you want to uh, achieve our result, as at least this is what is coming from our report, is to get at least the 50% of generation be on electricity. And uh, a large part of uh, this uh, gain in electricity has to be to come from, uh, from renewable. Possible this other slide could be a little bit clear to understand what is at stake today. Here is the natural uh, share of uh, uh, renewable energy in respect to the final consumption. You know that in the reference case, we have uh, a growth that uh, is not sufficient to get our goals in accordance with the Paris Agreement, uh, Paris Agreement uh, uh, achievement. So we have to increase our growth of the share of renewable energy in respect of the energy consumption. So we have to drive a six-fold growth in, uh, in the share of, uh, of renewable. And this is something that the number gives the idea of the efforts that uh, we are called to, to be engaged. And uh, we have uh, in this slide also the reference to the energy uh, intensity improvement that has to be at least 3.2 percent, a little bit more than 3 percent, in respect of the number that Fatih has correctly uh, shown. So what kind of investment we need? We need an investment in 2000, oh, from now to 2030 or more than uh, 110 uh, uh, 10 trillion. But uh, this means uh, up to 20 percent of our GDP. But we have to take into consideration, in respect of this number, what will be what we are going to save. First of all, the uh, subsidies that we are giving, about 10 to 15 trillions to subsidies to the, the, the coal generation or the coal related uh, 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 generation. So we have studied uh, in a model where we are trying to take into consideration all the different aspects of uh, the problem that we are confronting with. And so using a model where all the economy, the, also the employment and the welfare are maybe considered. And give we, us the chance to say that uh, if we are going to the path that is the path that we are suggesting we are with our roadmap to 2015, we can say for every dollar spent in investment, we will have a uh, payback from three to seven times. So that's make evident how convenient it is to take another road, or at least go with more strength in the road that the market is already trying to, 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 go, to go through. Our estimate is that the global GDP will not decrease just because we will uh, have more clean energy. The GDP will grow. This means that uh, this is not only a question of ethical or environmental question, it's an economic question. As has been also uh, uh, 
say that the geopolitical transformation that is ready to this fact make clear that this is the only road that we have to go through if we want to have an economic development that can be also fair. And the choice of uh, renewable is also a fair choice. Just to see that uh, it's not only the GDP growing, but also the employment. So if we invest in clean energy, we will get more employment. And this is very important because we have to take into consideration when we work for uh, clean uh, energy that uh, we have to balance and make clear the transformation is a win-win. We have assisted on how people when react where we are not ready to explain exactly how the transformation is going to be fair. And as Fatih has said, it's the only solution that we have if we want to ensure that the growth that we need to have a more fair world has to be compatible with the, with the environment and the capacity of the environment to support our, our life. So what are the recommendations coming from our report? We have modernized energy system for the renewable energy age, and we are perfectly in line with Fatih, where he's talking about uh, uh, the system that has to be capable to uh, be engaged in support the, the renewable energy into the system, so as to be flexible. And I have to say that in one of our recent reports, ARENA showed more than 30 different possibilities to ensure this flexibility. And that are, these are the existing one, and we also suggest new way how it is possible to, to ensure flexibility in the system. We have to align energy policy and climate objective. And we have to work to unlock investment and scaling up renewable energy projects. My last uh, slide is concerning ARENA. I think that uh, we all are called to do more. It means that also ARENA has to do more. What I will work in the, in the next uh, weeks and months is to ensure that ARENA has to be more present on the field. We want to assure our member states that we'll be side, side with them to ensure their ownership in their energy policies, help them to have a dialogue with the multilateral institution, institutional and financial. We will be there to try to help them and set clear rules on procurement, on bidding, trying on environmental legislation or on other kind of legislation just to make them able to attract private investment but without losing the ownership because ownership is the only way we can really change the way we act in many parts of the of the world thank you very much <laughs>